Hello everybody, welcome to Dak Band Productions and welcome to Conahay Rail. We have another mail call or unboxing or a combo, whatever you want to call it. That's fine by me. So this one comes from Public Delivery Tracks out there in California. So it's another vendor I like to deal with, uh, Beth Marshall. Good person to deal with. Um, generally I'll buy from them. Uh, if nobody else has it, only because they're in California and it's awful expensive to ship from California to New Jersey, but they usually have stuff that I want that nobody else does or they sold out, so I'll go there. <laughs> but, you know, with the unboxing, well, you know, it always comes with a story. <laughs> so, what is today's story topic? Um... Uh, Matt from Raritan Valley High Railers is going to ask me what's going to be your story and I wasn't sure but now I'm sure what the story is going to be. So we'll unbox and tell the story. So um, somebody, one of my viewers called me up, they have my phone number, and said Sean there's a couple people making fun of you because you keep your trains in boxes uh, on your shelf instead of just keeping the train itself on the shelf. I said, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. They can make fun of me. It doesn't matter. I got broad shoulders. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's my railroad, my basement, my layout. I'm going to do what I want to do. Just like when it comes to this channel. I, uh, I have my opinions, and I'm going to state them. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. So everybody's got their own opinions and their own way of what they want to do so, uh, something. But that's not what this story is going to be about. My story is going to be about boxes. So I found it kind of um, whenever I find something for sale, I find some stuff in boxes, some stuff without boxes. So here's a controversial subject for you. Um, long time debate. So what do you think? about keeping things in the original box. So I'm a collector, basically, who likes to run his collection. Yeah, I got a layout, but I, I'm, you know, I collect certain things, and I like to run them. But I will not buy anything without the box. It's got to be have the original box. It can't be any box. So I'm a stickler like that. But then there's some people who buy a train and throw the box away. don't care. Example is there's an MTH group on Facebook, and I would say a large majority of the stuff I see for sale don't have boxes. It's like, do all MTH people throw their boxes away? Well, maybe they're not as insane as I am by keeping the box. But um, I love to have the box. Myself, I will not buy without a box. But will you? Do you want the box? The original box the train comes in. Now, I understand post where, you know, there's going to be exceptions. Okay, yeah, majority of the post where it's going to be hard to find somebody has your original box. That stuff is sold, the boxes fall apart. Not saying that you won't find anything in boxes. I have seen post war still in their boxes. But I'm talking about, you know, models made within the last five years. People don't have boxes for them. It's like, what's up with that? <laughs> so I know some people are saying, well, where do I put the box? Well, I made storage uh, space underneath my layout. That's where I keep most of my boxes of the stuff um, I have uh, on the layout. But, of course, if you've seen, as I mentioned, my, uh, a tour of my basement, well, all of my trains were kept in their boxes. And the reason for that was because I wanted to mimic a train show in my own basement. This was during the uh, showstopper. Uh, you know, where everything was shut down. I wanted to have my own little, like, train show theme going on in my basement. So, that's why I have different shelves color-coded. That's why I keep my stuff in the original boxes. So, when I come down here, it looks more or less like a... <laughs> I'm going to my own train show. <laughs> but today, and like I said, in the comments, let me know. Would you buy... I'm talking about stuff made within the last five years, maybe ten. We'll leave it ten. Okay, stuff 
made in the last 10 years. If it doesn't have the box, will you still buy it? And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people will say, well, I'd rather have the box because I don't want the item to get broken in shipping. But then, would you throw it away after you get it? Or would you keep the box? For the next person you might want to sell it to. Some people say, having the original box increases the value of the per, uh, item in here. I, I can see that. You know, okay, this tank car might sell for $20 to $30 without the box. And then, you know, 50 to $60 in the box. Alright, so I can see that, um, you know, increasing the value in that respect. But then some people say, well, I would, I would buy it without the box because I'm saving money. So it really doesn't matter to me because I'm just going to put my layout on it anyway. And I just want to have something to run on the layout. And that's cool too. Well, let me know what you think. I know I'm rambling, right? But anyway, right, today, <laughs> uh, I got, uh, I'm going to get these out of the box. <laughs> The uh, Dupe Atlas uh, Master Series DuPont tank car, and it's done on the 11,000 gallon tank car. Um, so these are the very first 11,000 gallon tank cars that I bought, and I bought these to go with my CNJ F3 train. Um, so I will make a video, another video after this one. Uh, running a 1965 uh, CNJ F3 ABA. So this that would be uh, CNJ Air 1965. It will be the last run of the Tangerine Dream. As many people would call that locomotive. The Tangerine in orange. Because when I did the, my 1955 CNJ video. People were asking. Well, where's your other B and your other A unit? I explained to him, well, since this was 1955 era, there was a lot of cars I couldn't use. So, uh, I will make another video run for those of you who really wanted to see the ABA unit uh, towing trains. So, I got this to go with that because I didn't have any tank cars uh, on that train. And if um, anybody has any recommendations for you know, 50s or 60s uh, gondolas that would go with this, let me know in the comments. But, um, yeah, so these are uh, DuPont. Uh, DuPont was right here in Delaware's back, actually my backyard DuPont, uh, over in Delaware. It's not that, actually Delaware's not that far from where I live in South Jersey. Um, I bought two different road numbers from Public Delivery Track. We'll get them out, we'll look at them, do a little tiny review, and then, like I said, we'll do a um, uh, the last run of the CNJ Tangerine Dream F3 ABA. I believe that was, and I'll, I'll do some more research on this, but I'm pretty sure the last run of that was 1965 on a CNJ. All right, so um, let's get this out, take a look at them, and uh, looking forward to this. So I got the Atlas O Master Series DuPont 11,000-gallon uh, tank car out of the box. There was also another version of the DuPont that Atlas made, which was gray. I sort of missed out on that, but I was able to get the black ones instead. I would love to have both versions, but, you know, sometimes you miss the boot when the phones aren't there. But this thing is uh, beautifully detailed. I am very happy. <laughs> I am stoked to get this. It's a uh, very, very nice uh, tank car. Uh, you can see uh, E.I. Uh, DuPont of uh, Wilmington, Delaware. Like I said, this... DuPont was basically my backyard from South Jersey. And, uh, I, I don't know. There's, there's <laughs> I'm taking this in. There's a lot of great detail. So let's uh, get a close look at some of this detail. And uh, just look at that small, intricate lettering. Wonderfully done. And then you'll see uh, the top see-through grading around the dome the ladders, and like I said, you got to be careful handling this. And even underneath, 
the uh, the airlines and stuff. Uh, Atlas says, bar none, one of the better uh, rolling stock. And look at that, it's even got the, uh, the uh, road number uh, on the frame of the car. Now, you'll notice that this does not have rotating wheel bearing cap trucks. Now, this time around, I can't complain about that because this car was made in the late 40s, so it would have what's called friction bearing uh, trucks. It would not have had uh, rotating wheel bearing cap trucks. So, this is actually the correct trucks for this tank car. And, uh, I don't know anybody who's ever seen friction bearing cap trucks, but they have these little doors. Uh, let me pick this up. But I've seen real ones in life at museums. But they have these little doors that open up so you can put grease in them and pack them with grease. And uh, that was the freight man's job in the yard is to make sure these things were properly packed with grease. Um, on another note, uh, anything with friction bearing trucks has been banned from uh, mainline operation. So looking at this, it looks like the uh, the dome top might open. I really don't want to mess with it that much because I'm not sure if I... Oh, there it is. Okay. You got to be so careful with this Atlas O. But like I said, it's... Um, very, very nice. And uh, taking a look at the couplers, uh, they have uh, metal knuckle couplers, uh, metal trucks. So Atlas O has done a very nice job uh, on this tank car. And um, Again, if if you want something that's well detailed, then put it on your layout and leave it. Uh, this is not something that you want to constantly play with and take in and out of boxes. If you have kids and you're taking stuff on and off the track, you might want to consider MTH or Rhino instead. Um, at any rate, uh, let's get this in a, in a train. And we'll do a proper video run later, but right now we'll go ahead and uh, get this in a train and we'll do a run by. Dispatcher here, do you copy? Over. Roger that. Please start up and stand by. Copy that, dispatcher. Starting up the engine. Out. <laughs> So I got the uh, my two different road numbers of the Atlas O Master Series 11,000 gallon tank cars. These are perfect for the transition period uh, from steam to diesel of uh, the 11,000 gallon tank cars. Uh, but if you're looking for uh, the steam era tank cars, Atlas O does sell them as well. 
uh, the 8,000 gallon tank cars. But the 11,000 gallons are good for the transition from steam to diesel in the very early diesel era. So, let's uh, do a run-by.